Hi, this is Clyde Yancey at the 2011 American College of Cardiology meeting discussing the late breaking clinical trials on the heart.org in the segment entitled Trials and PIs. We're delighted that so many principal investigators have shared their information with us on this segment of the heart.org. And once again, we have a PI with us to discuss one of the late breaking clinical trials. This time we're going to discuss pre combat. With me right now is Dr. Sung Jung Park who is from Asan Medical Center in Seoul, South Korea. Now this is an incredible study design. This is taking patients with left main coronary disease and randomizing them to either bypass surgery or the deployment of a serolemus drug eluting stent. Wow. Dr. Park, thank you for being with us. Well, it's my pleasure. Please tell us a little bit more. What prompted you to do the study first? Mm -hmm. Uh, this study actually is a prospect randomized study uh, compared with just you mentioned about the PCI with the serolimus eluting stand versus bypass surgery for unprotected and main disease. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, we uh, included 600 patients, 300 in each arm, and the primary endpoint of our study uh, was death, MI, stroke, and uh, including a soft endpoint at uh, ischemic driven TBR. And basically, we designed this study as a non inferiority uh, of a PCI versus a surgery, a one year follow up total maze weight. Actually, the primary endpoint was met a uh, non inferiority of a PCI uh, compared to the surgery. Uh, the meaning is, we, have did, we didn't find any difference in terms of total maze weight in a one year follow up. And then, Absolute uh, event rate is relatively lower than we expected, mm -hmm. and so we're going to follow up. The, actually, we got to follow up two years, mm -hmm. and uh, still so we didn't find any difference in terms of a uh, um, base rate between the PCI versus surgery. So, a couple questions: How many patients again? Six hundred patients, and in each uh, arm or total? Three, three hundred in each arm. Okay. Right. So moderate size, not a large study, yes. not a small study, but mm -hmm. modest or moderate mm -hmm. in size. Mm -hmm. And to be very clear for our viewership, mm -hmm. what I've heard you tell me is that your study met mm -hmm. the non-inferiority mm -hmm. endpoint. Sure. So in other words, you're saying that percutaneous intervention with the serolemus eluding stent mm -hmm. was as good as bypass surgery mm -hmm. in unprotected mm -hmm. left main. Mm -hmm. Now that's a very provocative statement. Mm -hmm. um, some of us would be a little reluctant to change clinical practice mm -hmm. based on a 600 patient study, but we have to mm -hmm. acknowledge and pay attention mm -hmm. to the information. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this is a very um, provocative mm -hmm. statement that you've come forward with, but let's dig a little bit deeper. Tell me a little bit about the perioperative events, that is the things that would have happened in 30 days. Um, mm -hmm. bleeding, the morbidity issues, mm -hmm. atrial fibrillation. Mm -hmm. Give us a sense of what happened there. Uh, yes, uh, anyway, we didn't uh, actually evaluate in immediate after the procedures in terms of uh, procedurals related CK, surgery related CK, mm -hmm. limb, uh, MB elevation, etc. Cetera, et cetera. The meaning is our study basically designed in a little bit long term outcomes, mm -hmm. and so we uh, Evaluate in terms of frequency of MI is immediate after 48 mm -hmm. hours mm -hmm. and you know, key infarction and related symptoms, something like that. And mm -hmm. so, we have more concern about the uh, long term outcomes, including the uh, heart endpoint. Uh, right, as you mentioned, our study uh, size wise is relatively small, however, uh, you may know that the randomized study had an inherent, inherent limitation in terms of we're gonna randomize. However, we have a we have to select a subgroup, uh, you know, of a patient. And so, anyways, for the our study, so uh, some lesson, uh, the patient who had a relatively, you know, uh, less complex patient, less complex lesion subset who mm -hmm. had a the main disease is quite good candidate for. PCIs either in a population. And that's the point that we're getting at. Right. Is that we have to think about mm -hmm. the attendant mor morbidity associated with mm -hmm. either surgery or mm -hmm. percutaneous intervention. Mm -hmm. And then we have to understand the patient phenotype. 
because this approach, and I know that increasingly many operators are considering mm -hmm. percutaneous revascularization from protected left main, but it still connotes a higher risk group. Mm -hmm. And so when we see data like this, we really want to understand mm -hmm. what was going on in the surgical suite, what was going on in the cath lab, mm -hmm. and then who are the patients that you're studying. But suffice it to say that you did find a cohort of patients in whom it looked like things were similar. All right. Uh this is very difficult so far. Do we have the reason why we have very limited data? So however, I would like to define you know the patient who had a uh, first uh, osteal uh, osteal and sharp lesion subset, and second the main digit is a uh, very isolated main digit with a single vessel disease. Sometimes a two vessel disease mm -hmm. would be okay, and uh, the patient in technical point of view, the patient who had a bifurcation lesions. Uh, Sometimes we can treat very simply fire uh, procedure just a single stent close up, mm -hmm. etc. For those kind of patients, so for uh, uh, anyways, uh, the syntax score less than 33, sure. you know, uh, did a, a low score, intermediate score group would be the good candidate for PCI so based on the you know, data. So it's very helpful that you talked about the syntax right. score mm -hmm. because it really kind of better identifies mm. what sort of anatomic substrate. Sure. I really want to thank you for right. bringing this information right. to our attention, Dr. Thank Park. You. This pleasure. really helps us um, mm -hmm. put things in perspective and realize mm -hmm. that in selected patients, mm -hmm. criteria that is still being refined, it may be possible in some operator's hands to have reasonable outcomes over the short term using a percutaneous approach with mm -hmm. a serolinous drug eluting stent versus bypass surgery, but very much a need for caution here. Understand that we need to see longer term data. We need to really understand which patients, which operators, and obviously if the surgical suite can deliver really acceptable rates of morbidity and mortality in the perioperative period, really respect that that continues to drive our practice as we speak now. But these kinds of data points need to continue to be investigated so that our decisions can be informed with data and not empiricism, but we're delighted to see the pre-combat information come forward. Thankful that you've right. been with us, and we hope that you and the viewership have enjoyed this series of trials and PIs speaking directly to the principal investigators who are bringing the information to your attention. I hope this has been informative. Thank you for your time and attention.